Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's make a start. I'm in the shading tab. I've enabled viewport shading and I've got an object loaded that's shaded flat with multiple facets. And that basically is the key to making this look effective. We don't need the principal to shader, so we're gonna get rid of that. But then we're gonna press Shift A and search for a glass shader and connect that up to the surface for now. Change the index refraction to 1.47. Next, we need to search for a glossy node and a layer weight node and a mix shader. Change the color here to a very light bluish purple. let's say somewhere around there. Change the roughness to zero and the blend to 0.2. Connect the glossy shader with the color into the first slot and the facing value from the layer weight into the factor. Next, connect the glass shader to the second slot in the mix shader. And then connect the mix shader to the surface. You can now see we've got this kind of glossy overlay on top of the glass. We need to duplicate this collection of nodes here. Change the color value to a deep blue, deep light blue. Change the layer weight value to 0.4 and connect the glass shader into the mix shader. Now we need to, oops, don't need to duplicate all of those. I need to duplicate the mix shader and connect up the two mix shaders. Grab another layer weight node, connect the facing value into the factor and make sure this is set to 0.4. Now we can connect that up. And you can see now how it's being quite intense as it faces the camera and then it's trailing off as it works away around the object. We're going to do the same again by duplicating those three nodes. This time change the color to a sort of orangey coral color like this. Again, connect the glass to the mix shader and change the blend value to 0.6. Duplicate the layer weight node and the mix shader. Connect up that first mix shader and the glass and the facing value. <coughs> Duplicate the mix shader again and connect up those two mix shaders and connect that to the surface. And you can see again, it's made a small change there. And we need a fourth color. This time change the color to a hot pink. And the value on the layer weight node to 
8. Connect up the glass shader. Grab another mix shader. move things around a bit so I can make sure I know where I'm at. So they're going into there. So this one needs to come over here. Goes in the bottom slot. That goes into the top slot. And then for this final one here, we are going to get a light path. And we're going to take the output from is camera ray and plug that into the factor. Just going to make a couple of changes here actually. Don't need the glass shader in there, I need this shader in there. here. Bring our second one down. In actual fact I've got one too many shaders here. That can just plug directly into the final one. So you can see now that basically as you rotate this that sort of gold pinky colour that's here is going to be facing us always. And then the other colours will kind of follow us around and give the shading. So basically we have one, two, three, four colours. We've got the glass colour as well, which you can play around with if you wanted to. Um, but then basically everything is kind of filtering it in and um, mixing. That's the word using all those mix shaders. Now it does look a bit of a mess right now, so to get things tidy, what I'm going to do is select all of these and press Control G to group them. And then we're going to connect up all the colors to a group input and then press N to open up your side panel. Make sure you've got Node Wrangler enabled and then on the group selection tab we're going to move all of the shaders to the bottom And we're going to just rename each of these colors so we know which ones are which. Oops, three and four. So now when we exit the group, we should just have our glass shader, the node group with the four colors, and then the material output, which makes it much, 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 much tidier. Now, of course, like I say, you can change these color values to be whatever you fancy to get a different look to your Aurora Borealis coating. It's quite a nice one with the mint green and the pink. And then basically you just send that to render as you normally would. 
I'm still only using 512 samples and I'm still using very few light paths. You can increase these if you want to, but I find that just enabling denoising gives you a fine result anyway. So let's send that to render and see how we get on. And there we go, our Aurora Borealis coated glass. Looks good, doesn't it? Uh, here's a quick animation showing you that in motion. So it looks really good when you use it within animations. And it didn't take that long to render this either. It only took 40 seconds on my laptop. So that's good. Um, obviously, if you have enjoyed this video and found it useful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Do remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications of future videos. And of course, share this with your Blender friends wherever they may be in the world. In the meantime, thanks for watching.